morning we're at the Pima Air and Space Museum in Tucson, Arizona. We'll be taking a tour and then we'll be taking a tram ride.
what color is it? Um, what is it blending? Come over, and he's got to stick that pipe into a well. It looks like a badminton shuttlecock, is what it looks like. But he can get about 350 gallons in one minute. Converted Blue Angels airplane here. This is one of the solo aircraft. It'll do almost twice the speed of sound, so 750 miles an hour roughly. Multiply that by two, 1500 will do. This is one of the solo aircraft, supersonic. So when you're watching the four people up there flying around in circles and making X's, this one and their partner, one's out in the north and one's out in the south, as soon as these guys come down and kind of buzz the crowd, they're going to come across. Vroom, vroom, just like that. And you're going to go, wow, we do have an air show coming up, so hang around. On your left here is the F-15 Eagle. The Eagles have been around since the early 1970s. It's a supersonic airplane can actually increase speed when going up. Highest it ever went was a little above 80,000 feet, shot down a missile that was coming into orbit. Four is 104 to zero. Yeah, none of the bad guys shot down any F-15 Eagles. Here's your F-4 Phantom over here. The U.S. Navy started with them, and uh, they became a very popular airplane down south, carrier base. The Air Force picked them up later. The only way I knew they were full of fuel was when they leaked. But I want to tell you, that's a heck of an airplane. The missile on the ground there, there's one up in the belly. You can see one of the fins down there. But that's the Sparrow missile we used in Southeast Asia. On your right side here, number seven. This is another type of the F-4 Phantom. NATF is Naval Air Training Facility down in Lake Coast, New Jersey. And it's kind of my stomping ground. But this one is called a YF-4J. Y means prototype. The F-4, basic. The J is the number of models of aircraft. So if you started out with a basic uh, F-4A model, that's the one that came out of production line. Then they changed the spark plugs or whatever. Made it a B model. Put bigger headlights on it, bigger engines. It's a C model. This is a J model, and Y means it's a prototype. That was the first one out of the factory of the J models. Next to her here, number 29, this is called a DF-8 Crusader. It's a little bit, uh, DF is not a real good uh, example of what this airplane did, but she was called a drone controller. This is one of the most accurate uh, combat aircraft the Navy had. It only has guns, has an unusual feature. If you notice how the wing goes up and then right on top of the wing in the front in that little light brown color, there's a little red light. That's an anti-collision light. So you use that when you're flying at night, you know, like your headlights. But if you can imagine putting a big screw right there to lift up the front edge of the wing. So when you're going home, just ask mom if you can stick your fingers out the window. If you're nice and flat, like this is sitting right over here, it doesn't have much lift. What gives you lift? Air going over the wing of the airplane. So you're going to jack up the front of that wing just about 8 or 10 degrees, maybe 12 degrees, depending. And then going to raise the whole front of that wing. So your hand is this way, straight. Lift up your little big finger there, and your hand is going to go up in the air. That's the lift that that wing causes. And he uses it on landing and takeoff on carriers primarily. Regular dirt fields are kind of long, and she doesn't really need it. But she's known as the last of the gunfighters. Go to the left side now. There's two airplanes that are look alike. The one's got two seats in it. That particular airplane was at Yokota, Japan with me in the 1960s. It was called a TF-105. Trainer Fighter 105. The person in the back seat was the instructor pilot, and the young person learning how to fly the Nichols was in the front. Okay, they went to Vietnam. She went down to Tok Lee. And both of these airplanes would have ended up there. But the two-seater and the one-seater. The two-seater became a WW, a wild weasel. It was their job to fly alone 
into the bad guys' country, make them turn their radar on, try to shoot us down with a missile. Well, that, that radar beam goes all the way up to the nickel, the 105, bounces back, and they can fire their missile at us. <laughs> or big bombers. Well, what happens is the guy in the back now is what's called the WISO, the weapons systems operator. As soon as that beam of energy hits our airplane, bounces back, he's gonna fire a missile using their beam. It's either gonna intercept the missile or it's gonna all either land in their launching spot. Kind of a dangerous, you know, if you ever saw a John Wayne movie where he sticks his hat out the window to find where the Indians are. Ooh, there they are. That's what they're doing. Sticking their head out the window, making the bad guy shoot at us, and then you can shoot him back. The Nichols had a high rate of, uh, well, they, a lot of them fell out of the sky. My wife used to work in, uh, in uh, safety at Yakota Air Base, and she used to call them the thuds. That's the sound they make when they hit the ground. Three airplanes on your right. Now you start up here with a blue one with number 25 on it. It's a movie airplane. Even the one behind it, YW on the tail, was another movie airplane, but indistinct, indistinguishable. Ooh, that's a big word. Indistinguishable. Bill Holden, the bridges of Toko Rig. He was flying one of these airplanes. It's got straight wings, tip tanks, that's extra fuel. And he's got a gun in the nose, can carry two big bombs and six rockets. But he's kind of slow. Wow, the mix were terrorizing old Bill Holden for the person that he was uh, pro 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 pretended to be. So later on in uh, Korea, they said, well, let's see, we're going to make these airplanes faster. How do we do it? Put them back in the hangar, cut the wings off. The other two here, the white and orange and white and blue, are the same airplane, except they changed the angle of the wing. Now that airplane, the white ones, are in trainer colors. First one here's got two people in it, the instructor pilot and the trainee. Once you learn how to fly the airplane, they're going to still put you in a trainer because now you got to learn to fire the gun. So that's the progression of Bill Holden's airplane. Now they can go as fast as the Migs. As you look down here on your uh, right side, you'll see a MiG way down there. That's a MiG-23. That MiG has, it's just like our Tom Cruise airplane in the hangar. Do you guys get a chance to see that? If you don't, go go back and look at it. Tom Cruise, he was flying along. He said he felt the need for speed. So what he did is push the button, and the wings would go back, making him a triangle, not a stick out the side that holds you up in the air. So the MiG down there, you can notice, if you walk around, it has a shadow of the wing. It's nice and straight out. So that's what he's going to use for uh, coming off the carrier, taking off and landing. Otherwise, he'll pull the wings back and it's a supersonic airplane. The next one in there is a French and German design and basically she's the same thing, but our wings are now in a triangle formation. You can't see the horizontal in the shadow. It's called a tornado or tornado. How's that go? Potato, potato, well, it's a German and French uh, consortium. Good airplane. The one with the black nose and the gray is called the F-111, the Ardvark. Another radar aircraft that can go in and blow up stuff really tight to the ground. A friend of mine flew one of those uh, on the mission down to uh, kind of end Mr. Gaddafi's life. But got close. Here's an F-101 Voodoo. This is the second generation. This is the electronics warfare aircraft. Years ago, we had bombers going from, say, Greenland and Iceland all the way back into almost Japan, going all the way back across the top of the country, making sure the bad guys didn't come into our country and blow us up. This was the electronics warfare aircraft. If you did spot bad guys coming in, the two fuel tanks underneath could be dropped. He's got a whole tray of missiles in there that could ruin their lives. F-101 Voodoo, second generation, one of the best safety records of any of our aircraft. If you look down here at the Yellow Brick Road, you'll see an airplane down on the end there, 901. It's a little Cessna. Twin engines, got one that's out front with a regular propeller, and it's got an engine in the back pushing the other way. One pushing and one pulling. Guy named Danny Glover flying in the movie Bat-21. 
looking for Gene Hackman who got shot down. These are called FACs, F-A, well, it's forward air controllers. So they're out looking for survivors, out looking for targets of opportunity. The second one down there, number two on it, that's called the Bronco. Yay, Broncos! Oh, no, no sorry, that's the wrong one. <clears throat> no, it doesn't have a thing to do with Colorado. It's a jet turbine engine with propellers. Very uh, good airplane. This little lady on the end here, this is called the OV. It's an observation aircraft. OV can see. It's the third generation of this type of aircraft, used primarily by the United States Army, the First Army Corps. They used to fly out of uh, Cambodia and all kinds of different places. Not too much in Vietnam. You see that notice the landing gear nose door has a flap there, has four hearts on it. She was wounded four times in battle. I met this airplane in 1962, in 1964 when I arrived here at Davis Mountain. I was a fuels guy. That airplane and I were stationed at the north end of the runway here at Davis Mountain. So U.S. Customs got really good fuel service. Hangar 3 on the left again is World War II, the beginning of our involvement in it. And there are lots of stuff in there, all the way into a German D-1 buzz bomb. Pretty neat place to go. Anybody remember Sky King? Well, okay, there's a Sky King airplane in there. It has green around the engines, like this one has white and this one has black. It is a twin engine airplane, old old version, but it's it's uh, would have been Songbird 1. The blue airplane here would have been actually Songbird 2 when he got, you know, more money and he could get another airplane. These two are basically used by the VIPs here at Davis Mountain and aboard Navy ships. Well, not too much ships, but la Navy land operations. So the admirals and generals and all those folks can keep up their flying hours. Unusual airplane here on your left. This airplane is made by a company up in Philadelphia that made railroad cars. Yeah, the pretty car that's on the end of the train with the wraparound window. They're all made of stainless steel. Back when we got into World War II, somebody in the Pentagon pa panicked. I need more airplanes. We're running out of fuel. We're running out of aluminum. So they called this butt company up in Philadelphia. Can you make airplanes out of stainless steel? I oh, sure can. I need 700. Okay, wow, they started banging out and welding stainless steel. There's no nuts, no bolts, no twisty ties on that airplane. All welded stainless steel. Of the 700, well, there were only 17 made. There are two in existence today, ours and one complete aircraft. If anybody knows how to weld stainless steel, has the equipment, wants a job. I can't say a job because you're going to do it for free. So that's not a job. Yeah, well, we have a lot of the parts to put it back together again. Remember, the tri-engine, well, we're going to tell you about that right now. Remember the F-4 Phantom, that was a YF-4J, Y prototype. This one is a YC Cargo 125 called the Raider. Raiders, uh, well, uh, they ordered a whole bunch of these, but the military didn't buy any of them. They rented two of them and they sent them to Wichita Falls, Texas, down at Shepherd Air Force Base. And the A&P folks in training there, it's a big tech school, <coughs> A&P's airframe and power plant. They used to take it apart, put it back together again, run it. Graduate, another class would come in, they'd take it apart, and put it back together again and run it. Never flew it. Of the, uh, oh, there was probably 23, 23 or 24 of these made and there's this one just served down in Mexico. We got it.